Welcome to my December 2021 Patreon project. I'm so excited to share this with you. Today we'll be making a mini magnetic cabin. Then, in an upcoming project, we'll outfit the cabin with some cabin with some tiny accessories. If you made the mushroom mouse last year, this house is perfectly sized for those tiny mice. And here are the tiny mice. <laughs> if you have an extra mushroom or two from last year's project, they'll be super cute growing next to the cabin we make today. As I go through the presentation, feel free to pause and read. And of course, to mute me at any time. As usual, the pattern for this project is attached to the post on our Patreon page. For materials, I just want to make note of a few things. So it doesn't get too dark, I used lighter colors on the inside of the house. After making three cabins, I found I was drawn to very similar colors, so I'm excited to see what you choose. Also, I highly recommend you give the Zap Gel Glue a try. I was introduced to it by Danny Miller from our group, and I found endless uses for it, so thank you so much, Danny. The first step is cutting the chipboard. I used a mat knife, cutting board, and a ruler for my straight cuts. Then I freehanded the curved cuts with my mat knife. I didn't pre-cut the paper pieces first, as I do with the felt, but opted instead to cut through the paper and chipboard together. I found this method to be the most accurate. To prepare the pattern for the chipboard, I taped the back sides of the pattern pieces using a window as my light box. I love the zap glue to attach the magnets in this project. It dries in a flash and sticks to just about everything. Metal, paper, fabric, you name it. The flexi tip shown here is also pretty fantastic. It's precise with its glue application and there's no need for a cap. When the glue dries, it closes the tiny opening. And when you use it again, you trim the tip below the dried glue to open the flow. For this project, we cut the felt in kind of a backwards manner. We glue the chipboard pieces to the felt one by one with the magnets facing the felt. Then, we cut the felt around the chipboard with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. In the pattern pages, I provide a reference guide to help you get the seam allowances just right. I found that a popsicle stick was the perfect tool to accurately separate the chipboard pieces. By cutting the popsicle stick shorter than the floor's sides, I could line up the corners of the front, back, and side walls with the central floor piece. Use the same popsicle stick to separate the chipboard pieces at the ridge line of the roof. After cutting the exterior seam allowances, use a sharp pair of scissors to puncture and cut the interior seam allowances of the front door, back window, and roof window. Now we're ready to glue the interior color of the house to the assembly we've been working on. I thought I'd better share an image of the amount of glue I use. I applied it with the regular tacky glue tip, then spread it smooth with either my fingers or a scrap piece of chipboard. You'll want to avoid getting glue on the seam allowances because dried glue is not quite as nice to stitch through as the felt alone. Once the interior felt is glued to the chipboard, Use the exterior color as your guide and cut the two layers flush with each other. Now, glue the interior color of the roof to the roof assembly and cut the edges flush. On this project, instead of my usual whip stitch, we'll use the buttonhole stitch with two strand lengths of floss. By using longer than usual lengths of floss, you can avoid making many connections in your buttonhole stitch. I suggest lengths of about 40 inches. Before folding the house frame box, stitch the interior door and window frames and the two side edges of the assembly as shown here.
Let's take a look at this short video. As you make the buttonhole stitch on the interior seams of the door and windows, you'll need to drop the thread and needle through the openings with each stitch. Next, you'll cut out one felt front door piece. I used the same marble that I used for the interior of the cabin frame. Spread the chipboard door with glue, then center it glue side down on the pre-cut felt door. Glue the opposite side of the chipboard and lay it glue side down on the interior felt rectangle, which for me is this lovely crimson color. Cut the interior felt flush with the exterior felt, then pin open the magnet flap. Set the door upright in its frame and place a magnet on the flap. This magnet will stick to the one hidden beneath the felt on the frame. Put a dab of zap glue on the magnet, unpin the flap, and press until the glue sets for about 10 to 30 seconds. Before hanging the door, make a buttonhole stitch around the door and magnet flap. After stitching, connect the magnets and prepare to make the door hinges. These are created by whip stitching through the door and the frame seam allowances at point A and B. I made about four whip stitches on top of each other to create each hinge. Then I wrapped thread around the stitch in the gap between the door and the frame. Binding the center of the whip stitch hinge will help the door swing more freely. My hinges are almost invisible here because I used matching thread. A few steps ahead on the roof window, I'll try a contrast thread to see what that looks like. With the frame completed, we're now onto the roof. As you can see, I laid one of the magnet covering strips over the cabin to protect it from the glue, but you could also use a scrap piece of paper. With the accuracy of the zap gel and the flexi tip, it may not be necessary, but it's good to protect the cabin frame just in case. This short video shows the snappy action of the roof magnets connecting with those hidden beneath the felt frame. By using this method to pair the frame and the roof magnets, we can achieve perfect alignment. Before applying glue to the magnets, place the roof onto the cabin frame. Center the peaks on the underside of the roof. When you have them centered, carefully lay the cabin assembly on your work surface with three magnets facing up. Put a small dab of zap glue onto each magnet. When you close the roof, make sure that the edge is centered over the frame. The glue says that it has a set time of 10 to 30 seconds. I recommend holding and pressing the edge for a full 30 seconds. It's important that the new magnets hold to the roof with enough strength to pull away from the magnets on the frame. I glued the strips of felt over the magnets on the edges of the roof. In retrospect, I'm not sure this was my favorite resolution. When I make my next cabin, I think I'll paint them either a matching color or a fun contrast color. 
For the two magnets on the opposite side of the roof, repeat the process we just covered. Now glue up the window flap on the roof as you did with the front door, sandwiching the chipboard between two layers of felt with an eighth inch seam allowance around the sides. Finish up with a buttonhole stitch around the four sides of the flap. Center the flap on the window opening and make whip stitched hinges as you did with the front door. I used a contrasting thread so we could see the hinges a bit better and I think I prefer them standing out like this to the matching thread I used on the door. To attach the flap's magnets, I decided to live a bit dangerously and test the spread of the zap gel. I didn't put any protective felt beneath the magnets this time. With a small dab of zap in the center of the magnet, I closed the flaps and let the glue set. It turned out just fine, but I wouldn't try this without the accuracy of the flexi tip. For the chimney, thread a needle with a single strand of matching floss. Then fold the chimney piece in half lengthwise, matching sides A and B. Whip stitch from the flat end to the angled end and leave the thread attached. Then stuff the chimney leaving wool smoke exposed at the flat end. Whip stitch the oval to the angled end, then knot off your thread. To attach the chimney to the cabin, I used tacky glue. If you have fast grab tacky glue, that's even better. I considered using the zap, but having not tested it for this application, I went with my old standby. You can place the chimney towards the front or the back of the cabin as you like. Give the glue some time to dry and your mice are ready to move in. So that's it! My mouse is all moved in and ready to welcome friends for tea and cheese. Little ones will love to pop the roof from, this magnetic, from its magnetic closures and play mouse house. You can open one side only or remove the roof completely. It's fun to light the interior with a small LED dollhouse light. And I keep thinking I want to devise a pulley for the roof window or maybe find the perfect twig to prop it up now and then. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this project and I look forward to seeing what you create. This project was made possible by my fantastic friends and supporters on Patreon. If you found this on YouTube, you can get the pattern by joining my Patreon group for a donation of your choice. I look forward to seeing you there. If you enjoyed the project, please give it a thumbs up and follow me. It really helps my channel. Until next time, happy stitching!